What's up guys, we got the uh, second episode of what I'm calling Consumed. Uh, if you guys didn't watch the first episode, basically this segment is surrounding uh, my like readings throughout the week. If I find something interesting, be it press releases, be it uh, data, be it um, you know any type of articles, those types of things um, that maybe need a little bit more explaining, um, need a little bit more meat to, or have some more context around it that I think would be useful to uh, my following. So, you know, this week I found, um, you know, something that I've read for the last, I think, quarter or two, um, a company called One Click Retail. They're a uh, Amazon Analytics uh, SaaS company um, that uh, puts out basically a, uh, a quarterly kind of data infographic around the uh, grocery category, which um, if you guys follow anything about Amazon, you know that's kind of the uh, most important kind of area for Amazon at this point to compete against uh, companies like a Walmart uh, or or kind of anybody else in that category. So Amazon unfortunately doesn't break out like categorically a lot of times where the revenue is coming from. So a lot of times you really don't understand if um, you know that major growth was from you know one of the other categories or was it from their kind of heavy investments into the grocery market so um, just to you know i'll link the article below uh, that i'm kind of talking about but i'm gonna you know kind of take it in a, a little bit different of a direction just so you guys can get an understanding of just um, the scope of what's going on in, in kind of the e-commerce grocery section and uh, kind of how amazon plays in that so uh, one click kind of said that uh, you know quarter two they saw 650 million dollars and this is like I said estimates because Amazon does not disclose these numbers um, in quarter two so it, just in context like the grocery category on Amazon is on the bottom half of the top 10 categories I think the first category is electronics and then I think books and, and maybe movies and I think maybe clothing is third um, but the 650 million they're saying is basically uh, just accounting for the 1P uh, section, and that's basically from uh, Vendor Central and maybe some Vendor Express. I'm not sure if that's still around, but it's basically Amazon buying the product from their uh, their vendors. So that's a uh, you know, kind of only telling about half of the picture because if you guys know, uh, Amazon is made up and their kind of merchandising part of their business is made up about 50-50 in terms of what they consider 1P and then 3P, which is third party um, sellers. And that's what you would see on a, uh, on a seller central. So if you think about it and if they're kind of correct, you know, $650 million and you times it by two is 1.3 billion uh, dollars for the uh, quarter two. Um, I, I tend to think that's probably a little bit light. Um, if you look back at the uh, article they did for the first quarter, they actually had a similar number. And if you, know, you kind of follow the trends of growth with Amazon, um, you know that they're growing uh, each quarter over quarter. So I think that number is actually probably a little bit light. It's probably closer to you know, 1.5 or, or even closer, to like maybe even $1.7 billion um, combined across the e-grocery, uh, e-commerce grocery section. Um, and then they kind of break it down into like sections and, and category, like subcategories within that. And, and they're saying that uh, the big three kind of categories are cold beverages, and those are driven primarily through uh, bottled water and then energy drinks. And then there's also uh, coffee would be number two. And then number three, I think is just general snacks. And, and that probably can account for a bunch of different things. So, um, you know, overall, I think, you know, those, those things make sense to me. I, I think if anybody pays enough attention on, on Amazon and, and some of their merchandising rankings and just kind of their subcategories, you can understand those things. Um, and then through that, I mean, I think there's like some context that maybe needs to be made. I think a lot of times we, we speak so highly, I mean, even me, myself, we, I, I speak so highly about uh, Amazon um, and their kind of ambitions and their growth and, and a bunch of different things. But uh, just in context, I mean, you have, uh, you know, the grocery market in general, I think in 2018 is going to hit about $700 billion total. Um, you know, online groceries, I think in 2018 is going to be somewhere around like $18 billion, only accounting for that 800 billion. So it's a very small, small piece of it. 
Um, the run rate with Amazon right now, if they kind of kept going with what they're doing, I think they account for probably about 25% of the online grocery market. Um, there are some pretty strong growth numbers that are coming out from Kroger and Albertsons and Target and Walmart. So I think everybody's kind of growing in that category. So that number that they're kind of projecting is that $18 billion number for online uh, groceries this year. I think it's probably going to be a little bit light as well. It's probably going to be closer to $20 billion. But still, in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's a still a small portion of the overall grocery market. Um, you know, the other kind of thing you want to think about and, and you know, the Amazon versus Walmart type of thing is uh, Walmart accounts for about 25% of the grocery market at this point. So that is essentially about $200 billion. That's you know, kind of what I see as, as Amazon's uh, you know, focus. If they want to beat Walmart, they need to beat them in the grocery uh, section. And you know, obviously, if you kind of look at Amazon and, and they do break out the Whole Foods numbers. So if you take Whole Foods, I think last quarter they might have done about four or four and a half billion dollars. You kind of take the, uh, you know, what they're doing online plus, your, you know, some growth numbers and things through Whole Foods. I think together, I mean, that's going to be somewhere around, uh, you know, 20, 20 to 25 billion dollars um, this year. So, you know, it's about one, you know, one tenth, one eighth of of uh, what Walmart's doing. So, you know, a lot of times we need to kind of put things into context, even myself. So sometimes when I'm looking up these numbers, I, you know, I even kind of surprise myself because I go, wow, you know, there still is a lot of things that Amazon needs to do to catch up to Walmart. Now, you know, I think with one click retail, they're saying, you know, year over year, these quarters, they're growing about 40% uh, on their grocery. So, I mean, obviously with the numbers that Amazon are playing with, you know, they're, they can easily kind of catch up. And I think, you know, their main plan at this point is to uh, build out a lot of the infrastructure with Whole Foods um, to compete against Walmart's kind of infrastructure. If you think about Walmart in general and kind of what they have uh, against Amazon or how they can compete against Amazon is they have a ton of shipping points, micro shipping points. They, they have uh, I don't know how many locations at this point, but you know, I think the number that I saw, you know, it's, I think it's somewhere around like 95 plus percent of people are within 10 miles of a Walmart location. So if you think about Walmart and how they can, you know, take some of the things that Amazon's doing with Prime Now and, and Amazon Fresh and, and all those kinds of things, they have access to almost all of the United States within, you know, two hours or even, you know, one hour if you want to get kind of crazy. Um, so they can compete with some of the things that Amazon is really working on from kind of the convenience side of things. So, you know, just to kind of like pivot into the convenience side, I mean, I think that, you know, one click mentioned it and I think this is kind of, you know, what's the driving force around why Amazon's, you know, doing so well right now is convenience. Um, even if you look categorically in Amazon, a lot of the purchases are uh, around convenience, like the top, I think, uh, three or four products, or maybe even all top five of the grocery products um, in this quarter were based around convenience. So they were either like single serve um, coffees, be it like K-Cups or Nespresso or, or any of those types of things. And then um, also Soylent, which is kind of like a meal replacement uh, ready to drink that is is been super popular over the last about year. Um, so, you know, I, it just kind of makes sense that everybody's kind of playing with um, convenience over price. Um, you know, it's it's hard to compete on both convenience and price. I mean, I think that Walmart and, and, and everybody else is kind of seeing that. Amazon is usually not the cheapest uh, products out there. Um, and even with that, they're having trouble with profitability of the category. So, you know, it's it's one of those things to kind of take a look at. And, you know, what Amazon's doing is to try to curtail a little bit of that profitability. And it's what a lot of the retailers are doing right now is focusing on some private labels. So I know Amazon has been extremely um, aggressive in private label in non-consumable um, CPG areas, but they have also added a lot of private labels in, you know, coffee and snacks and baby food and, and a bunch of other things that would fit into kind of packaged uh, 
uh, consumer packaged goods. So, you know, they're really trying to beef up their profitability to to kind of offset some of the operational losses uh, from moving, uh, you know, low cost items um, through a different supply chain. And it's kind of the same thing you're seeing through like the food, drug, mass, convenience, um, all those types of customers, retailers, they're all kind of really focusing on building up their uh, private labels because they're all looking to to beef up their profitability in an environment that uh, a lot of the uh, packaged goods companies are struggling to to keep their margins uh, correct. So, you know, when the margins are kind of rolling up to the parent company, be it, you know, Kraft or, um, you know, Clorox or, or um, you know, Procter & Gamble or, or any of those types of consumer uh, packaged goods companies, um, a lot of times they have to increase uh, pricing and things to their retailers or their distributors. So it's one of those things where things, uh, you know, from a profitability standpoint uh, are definitely getting squeezed. Um, so a lot of these companies need to focus on private label. And if you guys have kind of followed the private label um, thing over the last probably about 10 years, you've seen it grow extensively. Um, so it's going to be one of those things continue to be a focus of, of retailers, regardless if it's online or uh, brick and mortar. So, you know, this is kind of the, you know, the, the point of the segment was uh, just to kind of add some, some extra facts and, and some context and things around um, the one click retails report. Um, if you guys know uh, anything about the kind of consulting that I do, um, I'm always kind of thinking digital first. So even, um, you know, in my day to day, sometimes I get um, so stuck on a certain type of uh, lens or a framework of thought, And sometimes you need to look a little bit outside of that and, and get some context on just kind of the numbers and what's kind of out there. So um, this is going to be up for this episode. Uh, if you guys like the content, make sure you guys hit the like button. Also hit the comment if you guys have questions about anything. I love to engage with um, anybody that's taking the time out of their day to watch this. Uh, you know, I'll see you guys on the next one.